more with Chapter 3 Three Dimensions of Man When it comes to mankind, there are three dimensions in one, because we are created in God's image. We find these dimensions outlined in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Put another way, you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Most people turn it in the opposite direction. They say body, soul, and spirit. But that is out of God's original order. You were created in His image as a spirit. The Bible puts your spirit first for good reason. God doesn't intend for you to be body-led. He intends for you to be spirit-led. Your spirit following the leadership of Holy Spirit. Your spirit is seated in Christ in heavenly places. See Ephesians 2.6. Your soul realm is made up of your mind, will, emotions, imaginations, reasonings, and intellect. Your body is the vehicle that transports you around the earth realm, and its five senses, sight, touch, taste, smell, and hearing, engage in the physical realm. So if two-thirds of your being is flesh and soul, and your flesh is at enmity with God, see Romans 8, 7, and your soul has yet to be fully renewed, see Romans 12, 2, how can you consistently walk in the spirit realm? How can you condition yourself to see from a position as seated in Christ in heavenly places instead of seeing what the world, the flesh, and the devil show you as reality? Put in a scriptural way, how do we do what Paul exhorts by the Holy Spirit's inspiration in 2 Corinthians 4.18 AMPC? Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, For the things that are visible are temporal, brief and fleeting, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Before you begin, your journey into the seer dimensions begins with understanding the three parts of yourself. Armed with the knowledge of how these three dimensions operate, you will understand how God intends for you to function in the earth while simultaneously taking direction from heaven. Yes, it is possible. Remember, you are a talking, seeing spirit with legal rights through a physical body to walk the earth. When you understand that you are a spirit, really understand this reality, you will begin to see your spiritual eyes open. When you get a revelation of how God sees you, and begin to see yourself through the eyes of the spirit rather than the eyes of the soulish realm. You'll more readily recognize how each dimension of mankind ultimately affects your earthly and eternal life. This is vital to your advancement in the seer dimensions, because without this key, you will default to walking by faith and not by sight when you can walk by faith in your spiritual sight. You live in fleshly body. The Word commands us to obey God's spiritual laws that govern the earth dimension. Our physical body operates in the dimension called the first heaven, established in Genesis 1, when God created man out of the earth and is governed by natural laws. Your body, for example, is subject to gravity and other laws of physics. In the first heaven, We operate through our five physical senses, taste, touch, hearing, sight, and smell. These senses inform our perception of the earth dimension around us. From a spiritual seeing perspective, what we see in the earth dimension, with your physical or naked eye, is a physical manifestation that can actually be touched or communicated with or through your other senses. Your authority in this realm is predicated on your prayer and fasting life, denying your body. This is one reason why Paul the Apostle wrote, 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12.1 God gave us a physical body so we could be his hands and feet in the earth and execute his will. He also called us to be fruitful and multiply. Our physical bodies reproduce children who continue to populate the earth and spread his gospel. Our physical bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit on the earth, and we are called to honor God in our bodies. See 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. When we give up mortality for immortality, we are sowing our natural body, and it will be raised as a spiritual body. See 1 Corinthians 15, 44. Until then, our bodies, our flesh, is actually at war with the Spirit of God. See Galatians 5, 17. And at enmity with God. See Romans 8, 7. The works of our flesh in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, have to be crucified. The enemy attacks our physical bodies in the first heaven. We call it oppression. We call it sickness. We call it disease. The good news is, we are not alone in the earth dimension. God is with us, and he will send angels to communicate with us in the first heaven, just like he did with Jacob and others throughout the pages of the Bible. See Genesis 32, 24. Sometimes angels will appear in physical form. When they do, it is always with a message from God or to partner to enhance your physical attributes to do God's will. You have an unrenewed soul. Every person has a soul. No one knows what goes on in your soul except you and God, unless you tell them. Again, your soul contains your mind, will, emotions, imaginations, reasonings, and intellect. Our soul needs to be renewed, and that renewal is a process. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, Paul wrote in Romans 12.2 AMPC, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transformed, changed, by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. As your mind is renewed to the Word of God, you will gain more confidence in what you are seeing in the Spirit. Many ask me how to tell the difference between their imagination and a true prophetic vision or dream. When your mind is washed with the water of the Word, you are less likely to mistake your imagination for what's truly prophetic. Remember, John the Beloved said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. 3 John 2.2 2. You will see more clearly in the Spirit as your soul prospers. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. When you accepted Jesus, your human spirit was born again. Surely you have heard this taught over and over again. But when you get a deeper revelation of this, it changes everything. It's the first step to being led by the Spirit into seer dimensions with greater accuracy. See, we tend to identify more with our body or our soul for two reasons. One, before we are born again, we rely completely on natural senses. And two, even after we are born again, we have to train our spiritual senses and constantly sharpen them. God created mankind in his image and his likeness. As God is a spirit, so are we. 
Our body is like a physical house, and our souls are like computer databases that can be corrupted, which is why our minds have to be rebooted or renewed. We connect with God, spirit to spirit. In other words, we aren't connecting with God through our mind. We don't see what he shows us in the spirit through our souls, and we don't hear his voice through our physical ears, except in rare occasions of hearing the audible voice of God. We see through our spiritual eyes, the eyes of our heart, and we hear through our spiritual ears. Our goal, then, is to develop our spirit man. While we renew our mind, we develop our spirit. We tend to spend more time on our outer man than our inner man. But Peter admonished, Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. 1 Peter 3, 3-4 We cannot enter into seer dimensions with our natural mind without risking deception. Paul wrote, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 Just like the Old Testament prophets spoke when the Holy Spirit moved on them, New Testament seers see as the Holy Spirit opens their eyes. See 2 Peter 2.1. We enter into the seer realm with our spiritual eyes and senses. If we want to see more clearly, we need to build up our spirit man. We have to let the Holy Spirit be our personal trainer, so to speak. Kenneth E. Hagen Sr. pioneered teaching on training the human spirit and has written entire books on the topic. For our purposes, I will offer three of his points in brief, adding context as it relates to the seer dimensions. Meditate on the Word of God I will offer an entire chapter on meditating on the Word of God. But know that this, the Word is double-edged sword that not only divides between soul and spirit, but renews your mind and educates your spirit at the same time. Practice the Word of God We should work to be doers of the Word, James 1.22-24 warns. But be doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the Word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Jesus is the door through whom we enter seer dimensions. Jesus is the Word made flesh. When we do not practice the Word, we are dimming our spiritual sight, because our mind is deceived. When we practice the Word despite the lusts of the flesh, we are allowing our spirit man to lead and become more sensitive to seer dimensions. Obey the voice of your spirit. God speaks to our spirit, and our spirit informs our conscience. Proverbs 20.27 says, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Since the Holy Spirit is speaking to your spirit, you should listen to your spirit. There are many instructions in the Word, but the Holy Spirit will also give you specific instructions for your life. Embracing Yourself as Three in One One of the mysteries of God is that He is three in one, and so are we. It can be difficult to wrap your mind around that because our living condition does not always seem to match our legal position. Legally, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Legally, we are hidden in Christ in God. But positionally, we still face warfare, sickness, grief, and toxic emotions. Learning how to present your body as a living sacrifice 
and renew your mind day by day according to Romans 12, 1-2, is part and parcel of letting your inner man, your spirit, lead you under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We can only walk in the light we have. See 1 John 5, 7. But we walk in more and more light as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. As a believer in the revelation that Christ is the Son of God, you are called to walk in heavenly places like Jesus walked. John said, As he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4, 17. Jesus walked with the Spirit of God everywhere he went. We can choose to do the same. Of course, this is a process, a process of faith, study, prayer, submission, and practice. But you were created to walk in these realms. You were created to see in the Spirit. Jennifer LeClaire here. I want to introduce to you Ignite's Company of Seers. You know, the Lord has been speaking to me about Seers, the Seer anointing, the Seer's mantle. Since last November when I was at the ACPE, I'm a member of the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders. And on the last day, as many of you know, a mantle came on me during a Facebook Live to raise up Seers. And I myself began to see at new levels. But most recently, the Lord began to speak to me about symbiotic vision, symbiotic vision. Listen, the definition is characterized by or being a close, cooperative or interdependent relationship. And Lord began to show me that seers who move in companies become uh, symbiotic. The, their collective visions unlock a greater revelation. And so I want to invite you, if you are a seer or you have a seer anointing, you're having dreams consistently, you're having visions consistently, or you're pressing into that gift, you're developing in it. I want to invite you to become part of the Ignite Prophetic Network's Company of Seers. I want you to press into this. There's a Facebook group. There's an email list. There is a fellowship of the Seers and it will unlock in you and it will stir up in you something greater than you can accomplish on your own. Look, you're not called to walk by yourself. Companies of prophets in the Bible lived in close quarters. Companies of Seers who come together under this banner, this mantle, this ministry that the Lord has given me will find themselves going deeper, further, seeing more with more clarity, more accuracy than ever before. Join the company of Sears, get ignited, go deeper, fly higher in Jesus' name. <laughs>